Hmm, looks like we're live. How about that? Uh, hello and welcome to yet another Zuzin session. How about that? So today we're doing something different. Uh, well, today I plan to uh, start working on port self-hosting, but unfortunately the recent Twitch data breach uh, actually... Um, you know, worries me a little bit, so I just don't want to start uh, a very important topic uh, at such time. So I prefer to wait a little bit to see how situation turns out, what kind of measures to which will implement and stuff like that, because I don't want my stream to be interrupted and stuff like that. So uh, I decided to do something different, right? So I decided to pick a simple topic uh, that in case if uh, something, uh, you know, happens to the stream, it's not that... Uh, bad to lose a VOD, if you know what I'm talking about. So uh, today I decided to do uh, a thing that I wanted to try for quite some time already. I wanted to implement a classical exercise of inverting a binary tree, you know, the, the classical one, uh, the one that, uh, you know, Google gives to people and stuff like that. There's a lot of meme, memes about this exercise. But I want to implement that uh, without using any recursion. I think it will uh, put uh, like an interesting spin on an exercise and I think uh, it should be possible to pull that off. And as for the language, I um, I think uh, I haven't programmed in Rust for a while, so I think I'm going to use Rust for this one. Uh, hello everyone, hello everyone, hello Fish, uh, hello Igoduk, Kraftwerk, MM2PL, Lenny Low, Zaylin, uh, Cooper Casted, hello, hello everyone and welcome to our Zuazin session, how about that? Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I'm going crazy. So let's actually make a little bit of an announcement uh, for Sin SCD uh, and start coding. How about that? How about that? So uh, I'm going to do something like a uh, red circle, right? Live on uh, Twitch, right? And uh, we're going to give the link to the people to our Twitch channel. Uh, our Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash Zozin. And I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. Right. There we go. So everyone who wants to be pinged is pinged. And there we go. There we go. And to, to our channel. That's right. You goddamn right. So let's take a look. So first thing I want to do as any Rust developer, I have to do Rust app update, right? Because I haven't programmed in Rust for a while. I'm pretty sure they released a lot of interesting features, right? So as you can see, yeah, I need to update my Rust, um, specifically WebAssembly uh, target uh, thingy. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Mm -mm -mm. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if if Twitch actually programmed in Rust, Borrow Checker would have prevented the data breach. So um, this is basically the data breach happened because they program in Go instead of Rust, right? Borrow Checker would have prevented all of that. We all know that. <clears throat> So, uh, does anyone have any questions or anything to say? Uh, I'm just looking into the chat while waiting uh, on, until my Rust updates. I'm just looking. Uh, so we have a sub uh, by Gia. Thank you, Gia, so, so much for 28 months I of tier two. To say, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for 28 months of tier two subscription and a welcome to our epic Uvu club. <clears throat> if they used Go generics, uh, that would have prevented the breach. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, so everything seems to be uh, updated and uh, I suppose what we want to do first we want to implement just a regular uh, binary tree inversion algorithm that is recursive one to have some sort of like a control implementation like a reference implementation and from that we're going to try to see how we can implement this algorithm without using any recursion right so uh, I think it's going to be interesting so let me actually close my Emacs and start my Emacs from within the development environment all right so we're going to do um, so we need to create a folder so how should we call the project. I didn't think uh, I can come up with any good name, so I'm just going to call invert binary tree 
uh, Rust, right? So we're just gonna put main.rs in there, and I'm gonna write a very simple program. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is how you uh, write hello world in Rust, and we can try to do something like Rust C main.rs. Uh, it seems to be compiling, all right? And if I try to run it, it says hello world. Would you look at that? So we already implemented hello world in Rust. Uh, we set ourselves for success. All right, so what is a binary tree? Does anyone remember what is a binary tree? Um, so, and how can you implement one in Rust in such a like super safe language where even implemented double linked lists is, is very difficult? Uh, to be fair, the reason why it is difficult to implement double linked lists is because they sort of form like a uh, you know, a cyclic reference, right? In case of a binary choice, there is no really cyclic references, so it shouldn't be a problem though, um, right? So anyway, so a binary tree is essentially like uh, a set of nodes, right? And a node uh, usually has uh, the value, right? Uh, let's actually draw that, I suppose, for anyone who doesn't know what is a binary tree, but I suppose majority of people in the chat and who's watching us right now do know what is a binary tree. Uh, so, but I want to explain that one more time, just super quick, why not, right? Um, so... Okay, so usually a uh, binary tree is essentially a set of nodes, right? Uh, it's a set of nodes and nodes contain some sort of values, right? So it has value one and you, they usually have a, a left subtree and a right subtree and the left and right subtree are usually another nodes that contain uh, their own values. And they also uh, have uh, children, right? And so on and so forth. And this is basically binary tree and it's called binary because each node in the tree has two uh, children, right? So, so binary is two, so two children, it's a binary tree. So, and the idea of inverting binary tree is essentially if you have a tree uh, that looks like this, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So here is your tree. Uh, essentially what you need to do, you need to flip it uh, horizontally, right? So it will become something like uh, 3, 2, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, 7, uh, 6, uh, 5, 4. So it will, uh, it will be basically flipped. So this is the idea. So you have this tree and you have to uh, flip it horizontally. And usually it's a relatively simple exercise if you know how to do recursion, if you can think recursively. But today we're going to try to do that without any recursion. But first, as a control implementation, we're going to implement a recursive one. So let's introduce uh, a data structure for the binary tree. How about that? <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, if I remember correctly, how do you do that? You define an enum, right? So, we, we can do that via an enum, right? So, this is going to be a node. And uh, since we want to store whatever, uh, you know, whatever the user wants in the node, uh, this entire thing is going to be generic, right? So, this entire thing is going to be generic. And a single node, I suppose, is going to contain the value of t, right? And uh, it is going to own that value. And then it is going to contain a left subtree, right, some sort of a left subtree, node t, uh, and the right subtree. So unfortunately, you cannot define it like that because uh, that basically creates, um, I just realized that enumeration in this case is not the correct thing to do. I think it has to be a structure, if you know what I'm talking about. So it's better to make it a structure. Uh, right, so this basically makes it an infinite structure, right? So that means we need to sort of pass it by reference. Uh, so I suppose the easiest way to pass it by reference is to actually wrap it in a box, right? I think, I think that's the easiest way to do that. Uh, and another interesting thing is that uh, the node can be missing, right? So somewhere at some point you will have leaf uh, nodes that don't have any children, right? So, and usually their their children are basically nulls, so they're empty. And if I remember correctly, in um, in Rust, the lack of a value is represented by option, but I'm not really sure if it makes sense in case of a box, right? Box is some sort of like a pointer on something that is allocated on the stack, or, or on the heap, I'm sorry, on the heap, right? So, and is box nullable? I would presume that it is not, 
right? I would presume that box is not really a nullable thing. So maybe uh, because of that, you need an option. And another interesting thing, do I want to put option behind the box or outside of the box? That's a good question. So let me actually take a look at the uh, Rust uh, standard library. So we're going to take a look at the Rust STD and I just want to take a look at the box because I don't really remember if box is nullable, but I'm pretty sure box, box is not nullable. So STD a box, uh, right. So uh, from row new, I don't think it is nullable, right. So once you create it, it's just like, yeah, it's just a pointer that always kind of exists. So I don't see any examples of this thing being empty or in any way. So, and because of that, I think it would be better to maybe keep the options outside of the box, if you know what I'm talking about, right? So it's going to be something like, uh, something like this, and this is going to be an option, right? So if I made any mistake, the compiler uh, will tell me, and uh, then we're going to fix all of that, of course. Then we are going to fix all of that. Okay, so if I try to compile this entire thing, it's going to be rustcmain.rs. And as you can see, everything is working. Everything is twerking. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I want to be able to maybe generate, um, you know, a tree, uh, some sort of a binary tree, because right now it's kind of difficult to do. Um, right, so because you have to manually uh, create a new node, we don't even have a way to create a node. Um, right, so but we can probably do something like this. We can derive uh, default, and that will enable us with uh, creating maybe um, uh, default things. Um, so maybe this is going to be something like empty, right? And because of that, I will be able to do node. Uh, and let's put something like um, i32 and uh, let's create a default value, right? And after that, maybe we can try to print uh, this empty value, right? So we're going to try to print this empty value. Uh, and let's just run this entire thing. So it does not uh, want to do that because to be able to print this entire thing, I think you have to derive a debug trait right if I remember correctly and there we go so as you can see we have a like an empty thing uh, but again so creating this kind of thing and initializing everything like manually is not particularly great so let's write some functions that generate um, generate the tree so we can generate it in different ways uh, we can just fill it up with numbers um, and I think that's going to be the easiest way to do, right? So we can just have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or maybe like some sort of like maintain a counter and just see how it goes. Yeah, I think that sounds great actually. Uh, okay. Uh, so generate uh, tree, right? So we're going to do generate tree. And um, I suppose, I don't know what I want to return. Do I want to return a node? Uh, by value, right? Do I want to return not by value or do I want to return it by a point? Uh, I think in this case it would be better to return it by uh, by value, right? So, and let's also introduce some sort of a way to indicate how deep the, uh, the tree will go, right? So, for example, here you uh, have three levels, right? So, there is a three layers. So maybe this kind of stuff is going to be customi uh, customizable. So it's going to be level and uh, yeah, uh, you will be able to just decide uh, how deep you want, uh, you want the tree to go. Uh, so, um, and then we will be able to do something like uh, generate tree, generate tree, and we're going to say level three, and then we'll be able to print this entire th uh, thing and see how it goes. Um, okay, so if level is uh, equal to zero, right, if we reached the zero level, I think we should return nothing. Uh, and that actually um, indicates that we want to return an option here, right? But on top of that, we're going to be assigning the result of generate tree back to left and right, which means that we want to do something like box node. So we want to actually like return this thing, right? So we want to return this thing. So in this case, I'm going to just not really return, but maybe I'm going to do something like, yeah, let's just try to return them. Why not? Uh, okay, so uh, if the level is greater, right, if the level is greater, we want to basically create a new node 
and assign something in them, right? <clears throat> we'll create a new node and assign something in them. So here is the node and uh, this one. So the question is, what's going to be the value? For now, we can set the um, the level as a value, but at some point we'll have to have some sort of a generator, if you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, so uh, we'll see how we can implement that. So in this one is going to be i32. So and then um, how do I want to assign that? I actually want to do something like left generate tree level minus one and then right uh, generate tree level minus one. But the problem here is that I'm not sure if this entire thing is how to say that uh, is going to be performed in a particular order. But maybe it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter in which order you will actually evaluate these things because these things don't really borrow anything. And as we introduce the uh, the counter that we'll have to pass uh, over this function, this code will not compile anymore. This is actually very freaking interesting. So this will not uh, really cause any borrow checking problems and the compiler will execute this kind of stuff in any order it wants. But then we're going to introduce something and uh, it will stop working. This is actually very interesting. I really like that. Huh. Okay, so and uh, that means we can do something like box uh, new, right? So we can wrap this in, into a box and then we can wrap that into a sum. Right. Uh, and because of that, we can actually do something like uh, else. Right. Yeah, there we go. So would you look at that? So we generated a tree. <clears throat> Professional Rust programmer already 10 steps ahead of a borrow shaker. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, right? So programming in Rust kind of like trains your brain to think how the borrow checker will react to this kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, so uh, let's try to compile the entire thing. And as you can see, it compiled it successfully. Right, so the output is not particularly great. And I'm not even sure if this format thingy can even pretty print. I think it can pretty print, but maybe you have to install some third party dependencies. But I, yeah, but like, you know, third party things, I don't know. So maybe we're going to implement our own printing function that will accept the, um, you know, the the pointer to this thing and just print this stuff for us yeah but 7tv is like a... so people are saying that i have to put a uh, hash in here and uh, is it gonna make it better it does in fact make it look better would you look at that uh but still it contains a lot of like unnecessary information you have some then node then left right and it's just like a really really noisy for um you know uh, for a tree, in my opinion. I think it's pretty noisy. So let's actually implement something like a uh, fan print tree, right? So a fan uh, print tree. So, and uh, what we're going to accept in here, I suppose we're going to accept um, something. Uh, we'll definitely need to accept maybe an option, right? So let's actually do root uh, option. And I'm thinking, should I accept a box? or maybe I can accept like a reference. As far as I know, reference is like a more generic version of the box. And I think box is kind of compatible, right? So I think you can pass anything uh, that is located inside of the box into something that accepts a reference, if you know what I'm talking about. I don't really know, I'm not a Rust programmer, right? So I'm a Python programmer, I'm coming from the Python background. So um, I don't really know what this language is capable of doing. Um, anyway, so let's actually try to do that. So imagine that I accept a value by a reference, right? So in this value is gonna be i32, right? Okay, and what I'm gonna do here is, um, can I pass a uh, box into F, right? And uh, here we're gonna accept this entire thing and I'm gonna just do something like this, right? So if I try to compile the entire stuff, it seems to be working. And now if I basically put X into a box, right? I'm gonna put 69 and then I'm gonna do something like f of x is that something i can do i don't think so uh, consider borrowing it here so if i do something like x uh it is actually passable that's very interesting so it is a reference but then huh 
That is very interesting. So that means box implements some sort of a trait, uh, right? So it implements some sort of a trait that allows you to sort of like um, convert this entire stuff. Maybe it's like try like maybe into or something, uh, but I'm not really sure, but you can do that. The question is, can you do this kind of stuff? Uh, it's called DRF. People tell me that it's called DRF. Okay, so uh so true i didn't remember that there was like some sort of a trait for this behavior uh use immutable dereferencing operator immutable dereferencing but it's not really dereferencing right so is the dereferencing responsible for that anyway the question is that i'm really interested uh can i do stuff like this right can i still pass stuff like this uh and in here so if i try to do something like this right uh, expected option this, but got boxed integer. So if I do something like that, right, uh, is it going to work? Uh, but what if I actually take a reference to this entire thing? Um, uh, it is not going to be worked. Uh, so, well, I mean, it does work. It just wants to have the debug information and it can actually work. That's actually pretty cool. Um, so that's pretty cool. That means that when I want to print this entire tree, I don't really have to accept option like reference. I only have to accept the box. So, which is pretty, pretty cool. Right. Um, so, and now let's take a look. Uh, we're going to match uh, a root like so. And if it contains none, we're not going to do anything. But if it contains some uh, node, right? So this is going to be some node. We're going to print that value, right? So we're going to print that value. <clears throat> so how we want to print that? That's a good question. That's a good question. So um, it depends on what exactly we want to do. So I think I want to first print left and right. So it's going to be print tree. Uh, then I'm going to do node. Uh, left, right, so I'm taking node left, and then I'm uh, printing node right, right, there we go. So, and after that, I'm uh, gonna print the value inside of this thing. So it's gonna be something like print ln, and it's gonna be uh, like this, there we go. Cool. Uh, two, 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 two. So this is the tree, and print tree, tree, there we go. Uh, so, and now if I try to do this kind of thing, it does not compile because why? Um, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it would be easier to just accept the box in here, <laughs> right? So I don't really care much. Uh, let's just accept the box and it will make it easier. Okay. So basically what we want to do with this output is we want to have a different indentation depending on the level. So the deeper you are inside of the tree, the more indentation you have. Right. So, and we need to keep track of that indenta uh, indentation. So let's introduce something like level uh, and it's going to be use size. I wish Rust had like default parameters. As far as I know, it doesn't have default parameters for whatever reason, but it is what it is. So, and we start at level zero, right? We start at level zero and uh, for a zero level, we should have no indentation, right? And as we go deeper, we increase the level, right? We increase the level and hence increasing the indentation. So, um, there's probably, there is a way to like put some sort of like a weird thing in here and, uh, you know, have a proper indentation, but I don't really know how to do that. And it, to be fair, I don't really care. So let's actually have a for loop. Uh, so we're going to have something like this in uh, zero to level, right? So we're going to simply print uh, two spaces. I think one level is going to be two spaces, uh, right? And then we're going to print the value, right? So, and if we take a look at this entire thing, uh, it does not even compile. I wonder why. Uh, I, I suppose to actually put zero in here. Yeah, there we go. So I have zero in here and there we go. So this already looks like a tree. So it's sort of like a tree on the side if you know what I'm talking about, right? So a tree inside, so here a tree like standing up and here we actually, you know, cut it and it fell off on the side. So it's like a fallen tree, uh, <laughs> right? So, and you can kind of like visualize the, the branches in here, right? 
you can kind of visualize that. And then you can uh, increase the amount of levels. So we can say that it's going to be uh, four levels, uh, right? And it, it kind of looks like a tree if you think about it, right? So it's just like, yeah, that's that's a tree. That's a binary tree. That's pretty POUG. Isn't that POUG, fellow kids? Uh, I think it is. But here is the problem. Since uh, all of the nodes on the same level have the same value, uh, if you flip that tree, it doesn't change. So this tree is useless for the purpose of demonstration of the inverting binary tree algorithm, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so... <clears throat> Uh, two, 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 two. Um, all right. So what I want to do instead, I want to actually generate a tree that has like a single counter, right? So we need to introduce some sort of a counter. And as we like recursively go uh, throughout the tree, as we DFS the tree, it will increment and create like a unique value for each individual node. So when you flip the tree, it's actually different. You see what I'm talking about, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, so generate tree. So we want to maintain some sort of a counter, right? Um, and uh, usually what I do, I pass the counter as an argument. Uh, right. And since as you go down into recursion, the counter may change, we have to pass this counter as mutable value, right? There we go. So maybe we're going to do something like uh, I32. Uh, all right, cool. And um, now, uh, what I want to do, I want to use the value for the counter, right? So this is the counter, and uh, after that, I need to increment the counter. Um, so, and this becomes a little bit complicated, just a tiny bit complicated. That means it's better to put the node somewhere in a separate variable. Okay, so let's actually do something like node uh, and do node default, right? So I'm just creating the default node. Then for the value, I'm gonna just create a counter, right? And then I'm gonna increment the counter, right? Uh, and after that, uh, I'm gonna generate the left subtree. So level minus one, counter. Uh, and I'm going to just assign uh, that to the left subtree. So you see now um, this function is going to update the counter as we go down deeper, deeper in the recursion is going to become bigger and bigger. And then once we're ready to generate the right subtree, uh, we're passing the updated counter in here. There we go. So this is how we're going to approach this, uh, this kind of stuff. And you won't be able to actually use that syntax that we used before because uh, you have to borrow the counter like one uh, once at the time. And I hope this will work. I'm not 100% sure, but I hope it will work. So, and then we can create a mutable counter that starts at zero, uh, right? And maybe pass it uh, like so. There we go. So we have a counter and you keep track of the of these things, right? And now, so how many levels do we want to have? Let's actually have three levels and uh, it does not even compile. Nice. So uh, I suppose it has to be, oh, there is no default um, value for i32. Really? That is very interesting. So it's not implemented for a mutable i32. But why is that supposed to be a mutable i32? I'm not quite sure. So uh, also if I go to return a node inside of a box, right? So I have to do it like that. Uh, I suppose, and uh, it's still complaining why it is mutable. This is really, really sus, not gonna lie. This is really, really sus. I mean, in any case, I can just like set a value to something, right? Uh, I can just set the value to something, and it is going to be. Uh, ah, I see. I see why it is mutable because I'm modifying these things. Okay, so I'm modifying this thing and that's why it's mutable. All right, so that makes sense. Um, mm -mm, but uh, it doesn't really change that much stuff. 
All right, so let's actually do something very simple then. So the value is going to be maybe uh, like this. So the value is going to be a counter, which means that I don't have to do this kind of stuff. And then left is going to be uh, none and the right is going to be none, right? So something like this. Uh, let's see if it's going to do anything. So the counter cannot be applied to... Uh, okay, so that means I have to dereference this entire thing, sure. Uh, and then we, as we generate, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh, oh, I think what it wants is, this is really, really interesting. So I want to copy the node in there. I want to actually be able to clone that thing in there. Huh, that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, probably. So, expected mute i32, but found i32. Um, all right, so uh, let me see. So, I think to be, to, to be able to clone it, I have to make it clonable, like so. Uh, right, and let's just give it a try. Maybe that's what we want to do. But maybe I want to actually wrap it into a box, like, right away. Uh, right, so this is going to be like, like this. Maybe that will help it. Um, no, I don't think so. I think it has to be uh, like that. Oh, shit, wait a second. Ah, oh my god. That's what I want, right? That's what I want. Okay, so I, I see what's going on. So it was trying. Okay, okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, so now, and there we go. So now it is working, as you can see. So we have a tree. Um, it's not exactly as it is in here, right? It's not exactly as it is, but it's something that you, when you flip it, uh, it's going to look different. And I would rather prefer that the counter will start at one, right? I think when it starts at one, it's going to look a little bit better. So now we have this kind of tree. So does it look good? Does it look Gucci? Does it look Atamaguchi? Mm -mm -mm. Um, Gucci and Tamaguchi. Mm -hmm. doo -doo -doo -doo. So, uh, yep, we generated a binary tree. How about that? Using uh, thrust. So the next thing, oh my god, uh, frag proof uh, subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much for uh, your Twitch Prime subscription. First subscription, by the way, and welcome to our epic Rust Club, where we dub on Python developers <laughs> because Python is slow. Uh, all right, so um, let's take a look. Um, what we want to do? We want to have a function something like invert tree, right? And how we're we gonna implement that? I suppose we can accept the tree as um, you know as this thing, and we have this type like everywhere, right? Maybe we could create some sort of um, an alias for this type, uh, but I have no idea how to call it, right? So, um, I don't know, we can try to call... Oh, and it also creates like a reference. Oh, but it's a Rust. I keep forgetting that in Rust it just doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so how are we gonna call this? Uh, I can call it maybe node ref, right? And this is what we're gonna have in here. Is that a common practice in Rust to create such types? You know, uh, because it, it's, it's kind of cucumbersome to actually like use this stuff uh, all the time, so it would be better to just have like a node ref or whatever. Uh, right, node ref t, um, node ref uh, t. And maybe I can do the following thing. I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of a Emacs magic and query replace this type with uh, node ref, right? Boom, boom, and uh, probably I have to also replace this thing. Um, let's quickly do that. Uh -huh. Boom, boom, there we go. W look at that. Look at how it looks like. It's actually beautiful, right? Now, finally, it is readable. Uh, so, yeah, nod and nod the ref. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, okay. So, we are inverting a binary tree. Uh, so, and we're gonna accept uh, this thing, and I suppose uh, we don't really care about what binary tree you're inverting. So we're gonna pass it as the um, as the generic. So this is gonna be a generic function. So in case of a printing, though, 
I have an idea. We can make print generic as well. So generate probably requires a very specific type because we're like incrementing it and stuff like that. So generating is a specific type, but printing doesn't really have to be a specific type. Right. So it has to be just something that is printable. Right. So we can say that T has to be debuggable. Right. Makes sense. Right. So uh, or maybe just display. Right. Uh, it has to be something that is displayable and that's pretty much it. And I think it's going to work. So and if we change this entire thing to, for example, tree of strings, we can reuse the same function. The, the code reusage, the code reusage increases. Right. So does your Go have something like that? Your Go doesn't even have any generics. Oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm so sassy today. Uh, so uh, let's continue. So, it, and it doesn't even compile as you can see, because probably I forgot the semicolon, right? So that's the reason. I think that's, that's the reason. Okay. So uh, the display is located in STD FMT, right? It's located in STD FMT. So let's actually include this entire thing. And there we go. As you can see, it still works. Um, right. It's pretty cool. Uh, now let's start inverting the binary tree. So I don't know what kind of interfaces T needs to implement. So I'm going to leave this generic as it is. Right. So, and then we'll see what, what needs to be implemented. And here we're going to do something like this. Well, we're probably going to copy the contents and stuff like that. So at least this thing has to be called clonable, right? So T has to be clonable. Um, yeah. And I think that's going to be enough for now. We'll see. Okay. So let's match the root. Uh, if root is none, there is nothing much to return. We're going to just return none, right? There we go. Uh, and then we can accept sum, uh, and this is going to be the node, uh, right? So what we're doing in here is essentially we need to create a new node, I think. Uh, right, we need to create a new node. But the question is, what's the easiest way to create a new node? You know what? I was avoiding creating constructors for the node, but I think the time has come. Mm, I still I think the time has come. So let's uh, create some uh, constructor for the node, right? So, um, but maybe the constructor is going to uh, is going to accept value left and right. So in that case, um, it's not really doesn't make any sense to actually have any constructor. So let's actually do something like node uh, value is going to stay the same as the node value, right? So this is going to be the node value. The left one is going to be equal to uh, the right one, right? Again, we're trying to flip the tree horizontally, but since our tree is on the side, we're flipping it vertically. You, you will see what I mean. So, and to achieve that, we're assigning the right subtree to the left one, but the right subtree has to be inverted as well, right? It has to be inverted as well. Uh, so we invert uh, the right one, and for the right one, we are assigning the left one, and we are inverting that thing as well. So we're inverting anything, everything. And as you can see here, we also have to clone the, the value, otherwise it's not going to work. And I think that is it. Well, we also have to wrap it into a box, right? We also have to wrap it into a box. And we also have to wrap it into a sum. Nico red ch. Not ch, but h. I, I don't know how to pronounce your nickname, but thank you so much for Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic Rust Club. And Deep Singularity, hi, 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 hello. How are you doing? So uh, I think that's basically how you invert a binary tree, if I remember correctly. And I wonder if this entire thing will compile. Let's figure it out. Uh, it does not compile because uh, probably operator none. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I think I need to put a comma in here. Um, mm, 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 mm. Unclose the delimiter. I see what's going on in here. Yeah, that's what I need to, to do. Mm, so maybe, just maybe, just maybe that's, yeah, that's what they wanted. Okay, cool. All right, so here is the tree uh, before being inverted, right? It's a tree before being inverted. Uh, now, uh, I want to print some sort of a separation line, right? 
so it's going to be something like 30. And uh, let's print tree, but also invert that tree, right? So this is going to be uh, invert tree, uh, tree, and we're going to start from zero. All right. So did we achieve the, uh, you know, the goal? Uh, which does not implement a copy trait. You telling me uh, that this thing um, mm, 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 does not implement a copy trait, but this is not true, does it? <laughs> so only T has to implement the copy trait. Uh, but it just doesn't work it like that. Okay. Uh, move a curse. Ah, it moves it. Oh, okay. I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Uh, printing the tree actually moves it out. So I suppose we want to actually accept that tree by a reference, which is referenced by itself as well, which is really strange, but it is what it is. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> Um, I suppose that's what we have to do in here, right? So, uh, and, uh, yep, um, so this is expected reference found option. Uh, okay, so that means here I also have to uh, accept this thing by a reference. Uh, so this is going to be left and right. And uh, what else do we want from me? Uh, oh, I accidentally put F in here. And finally it works. Let's see if it's actually flipped horizontally. In our case, it's vertically. Right, so here is the original one, uh, one, five, two, and here we have two, five. And here we have three, uh, four, six, seven, and this one, six, seven, four, three. As you can see, this entire thing is flipped horizontally, but since our tree is on the side, it's flipped vertically. Um, did I pass the interview? Did I pass the Google interview? Can I work at Google and make a lot of money already? Please, uh, Google, please hire me. I just passed your interview, like, easily. Easy. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I don't want to work at Google. Okay, so we essentially implemented inverted binary tree so um yes 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 kawaii freaking this should i uh, actually upload that to github for anyone uh, who wants to work at google to study right if you be, will be able to implement that in rust you instantly get, get hired by google seriously uh insta uh, insta fang uh, developer um okay and to, 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 let me actually, uh, you know, upload it. So I'm going to release that under MIT license. So it means you'll be able to do whatever you want from it, uh, with it. And uh, right. Um, invert uh, binary tree implementation. Uh, implementation in Rust. Right. So we're going to have something like a quick start. And in a quick start, we're gonna have, uh, you know, Rust C. As you can see, you don't even need any cargo to invert a binary tree, right? So people think that you need to install some sort of third-party dependencies that inverts binary tree for you, but you don't, you don't need to do that. You can just do that yourself, right? So and uh, there we go. So and then I want to also git ignore uh, the main executable, right? And let's just do git init, uh, right? Let's just do git init. Ready, ready, set, a go. Wait a second. What the hell is this shit? No. Ready, set, rust. Imagine programming in Go in 2021. Cringe. All right. So uh, let's to uh, to to let's create this thing. Uh, invert uh, binary tree in the Rust. Uh, then I'm going to just put this in the description and uh, this entire thing is going to be public, of course. This entire thing is going to be public and let's uh, go ahead and add the origin. There we go. So, uh, a boom. Uh, Twitch is going to switch to Rust now. Exactly. 
borrow checker, I'm telling you, borrow checker would have prevented the data breach. <laughs> anyway, so um, you can find the source code of inverting binary tree here. Uh, I'm going to post it in the chat. And for people who's watching uh, on YouTube, uh, I'm going to put that in the description, right? So we're going to have something like um, source code, right? So here is the source code. There we go. It's pretty cool. So maybe we also need to, um, you know, update the command. Uh, right, so let me take a look at the, uh, the command. And here is the command, uh, right. So here is the command. Uh, I want you to start blah, blah, blah. So or um, the cmd project or um, one or sender, right? So if you didn't provide any command line argument, use the sender as an argument in here. Um, so we we'll need to try that for a while. So then pause. And here we're going to have a source code, right? Source code. And you will be able to find the source code in here. Mm. There we go. So the command has been updated. And if you do the uh, command now, everything works all right. There we go. So the next step, right, uh, as we implemented the control algorithm, right, as we implemented the control algorithm is to try to implement the same thing, but without the recursion. How can you do that? Actually, this is a very good question. How can you implement this kind of shit without the recursion? Um, right. Uh, so let's go ahead and change the title of the stream, uh, inverting binary tree um, without recursion. Eh. Uh, without recursion. Uh, I'm not even sure if it is going to be easy using Rust. I may actually fail miserably, but at least I want to try it. So uh, the first thing we can try to do, we can try to print the binary tree without using any recursion. So the only reason why we need to um, to need to need to use recursion in this particular case is to maintain a stack of the nodes, right? So this is basically how we are working in here. So to to to, to if you follow how the um, <clears throat> how you traverse the tree recursively. If you actually follow how it is traversed recursively, you will notice a very interesting thing. You will notice a DFS pattern. Um, okay, so I think I, I know about a very cool demonstration, right? So let's just take uh, the current tree that we have. Uh, right, so the current tree is 152, right? So let's actually split everything in here. Um, so it's going to be this, 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 and this, uh, one. So here is the one, uh, then five. Um, so we actually start with the left, if I'm not mistaken, right? So we actually start with the left, uh, where is the print? Uh, yeah, first we print left. That means this one is the... A left one so it's going to be two uh five right it's more of a, like a two five uh and for the two um it's going to be three four um six seven right i think if you it's not even like on the side it's also kind of flipped already uh right so i think think to make it like more appropriate we have to first print the right one and only then it will look kind of on the side so it has to be right left i think yeah i never thought about it actually so let's actually do rust c main.rs and there we go so that, that looks a little bit more correct so now uh if you sort of rotate it visually two is on the left and uh our tree uh, that is in here, it actually corresponds like one, two, five, three, four, six, seven. Okay, so we have this tree. Uh, cool. Now, what I want to do, I want to um, traverse the tree, but I uh, want to print uh, in which order we uh, sort of visit the nodes, if you know what I'm talking about. Right, visit uh, nodes. So in here, I'm going to accept the display. Uh, here, we have root node ref t uh, 
Do we need the level? I don't think we need the level. We just want to visit these things. Uh, this is going to be match root. Uh, some node. Uh, right, so some node. And uh, we're going to simply print that node. Nothing special. Just the just the number. Um, so it has to be displayable. Node value. Right, node value. And after that, we uh, visit the right subtree, right, the right subtree, uh, actually left one, we have to visit the left one, and then the right one. So we visited the right first just to visualize that a little bit better, but but in reality we want to visit uh, the left one first. Uh, Alright, so and then uh, in case of a none, we just don't do anything, right, so we just don't return anything, cool. So we're visiting the nodes, uh, so here we generate the tree, uh, right, and then after we generated the tree, we want to visit the tree and see in which order we uh, visit the nodes. Right? So it uh, doesn't really work because if I got this thing, luckily the compiler actually tells me uh, what needs to be done in here. And there we go. Okay, so yeah, here is the tree. And this is the order of the uh, nodes that we're visiting things in. Actually, we're visiting them in like a straight order, probably because we are generating them in this order as well. That's actually very interesting, didn't think about that. But here's this thing, uh, how do we visit the nodes? We, vi we visit them like this, so first is the one, then this one, then this one, then we go back a little bit and visit this one, then we go back again and visit this one, then this one, and go back, visit this one, and as we visited everything, we go back. So you can actually uh, sort of simulate that order of uh, visiting by maintaining the stack, sort of speak. Uh, right, so essentially, uh, you have this node, right? You have this node, uh, it's a first node. Uh, you put it on the stack, right? So you have one on the stack. Then uh, you look at the stack, right, and see, okay, I have one. Uh, so I'm going to pop one from the stack. I'm popping it from the stack. Um, then I'm going to put um, the right one on the stack, right, so five, and two on the stack as well, right. And then I repeat this algorithm yet again, right, I repeat it yet again. I look at the stack, okay, I have two. So uh, then I am going to remove the two uh, and uh, I'm going to put uh, four on the stack, four on the stack and three on the stack. Uh, then I'm going to repeat that algorithm again. I have three. Uh, I'm going to remove it from the stack, but since it doesn't have any children, I only have uh, three. And this is basically imitates this order of traversing the, um, the nodes. And in fact, that's exactly what call stack is doing. So the only reason why you want to do a recursive algorithm is because you want to exploit the call stack, right? But if you don't have a recursion, you can just imitate the call stack yourself. You see what I'm talking about? Right. Um, so yeah, the only reason why we do recursion is because we want to use the call stack, right? Uh, because it's managed for free for us, but um, we can just maintain it ourselves. And this is precisely what I, uh, uh, I want to try to do today, right? I want to implement a version of this algorithm that is not recursive, but that uses the call, st uh, the new call not call stack, but uh, our own stack. So, and here is an interesting thing. I believe you can transform uh, any recursive algorithm into a non-recursive one by just maintaining the stack yourself, right? So you effectively, I think, don't even need a recursion in your language. If you, uh, if you can maintain a stack on your language, you just don't need a recursion. Um, so some of the algorithms is, is not going to be as elegant as if you would express them recursively, but it's not essential. That's what I'm trying to say. So you still can live without it. <clears throat> um, all right. So let's give it a try, I suppose. Uh, um, so let's, cr uh, let's actually try to implement printing without the recursion, right? Let's try to implement printing. And uh, I'm a little bit worried that uh, maybe we won't be able to do that because of the, um, you know, um, because of the borrow checker or something like that. Uh, because we have nodes, right? 
we have nodes that point to each other. And then I'll have to keep the reference to the nodes in a second place, in a second place. Right, so we're going to have a couple of places uh, that refer to the same node. So the tree itself and the stack. So I'm worried a little bit that it may create a problem with the borrow checker. Uh, right, so maybe we want to replace box with something like arc or rc instead. So to have like reference count. Because as far as I know, reference count allows you to point to several things. And uh, maybe that way we'll be able to do that. But first, let's actually start implementing things and see uh, how it will go. Mm. I want to hit the problem first. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to have uh, a fan print tree. And uh, of course, this is going to be displayable. But let's actually say uh, non rec so non-recursive uh, and this one is going to be something like this uh, node ref uh, t and here's an interesting thing we can actually maintain the uh, the level ourselves um, within the function so I don't think we need to actually pass that thing in there um, all right and now mm, oh so if we have stack that looks like this, right? So this is going to be a vector uh, that contains the node reference, right? So it contains the node re reference. Um, and mm -mm -mm. so this is going to be new. Uh, every time we need a level, we can take that level from the size of the stack. Hmm. From the size of the stack. This is actually pretty cool. I really like that. So, okay. Um, so this one is rather interesting. So we pass it by a reference, uh, but maybe I also have to keep it as a reference. But the following idea is, is this. Uh, I push the current root like this, and while stack is uh, not empty, I'm pretty sure like vector has something like not empty. If it doesn't, we're gonna, we're gonna implement it slightly differently. Uh, while it's not empty, I'm going to take the note. Uh, so right now, I, I know that this code won't compile. I'm just outlining the logic um, that I want to actually print. Um, so I'm going to pop the element from the stack, uh, right? I'm going to pop the element from the stack. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So this one is rather complicated because I don't think I will be able to print the tree like this. But I can try to print in a different style. Uh, so essentially, I can do print ln. Uh, right, I'm going to print the node uh, and I'm printing the value like so. Right. Um, I'm printing the value like so. And then I want to push uh, root right and then push root left. Actually, not root, the node. There we go. So, and it will you know, keep repeating until uh, it will exhaust the entire tree, right? It will repeat until it exhausts the entire tree. Um, okay, so, and we don't have any uh, leveling right now, but I'm going to implement it a little bit later. So first I want to make this code compile and then we'll see. Okay, we're generating the tree, we print the tree as it is, and then we can try to print the tree in a non-recursive, uh, you know, manner. Right, there we go. So printing the tree. That's pretty cool. Uh, okay, so let's see how horribly it will fail. Okay, so there is an associated function uh, called is empty, uh, right? N not is empty, uh, and uh, so this is the value, uh, no field value. Oh, so yeah, this one is really interesting because it could be option. Yeah, this is really strange. Uh, so no ref can be null. So that means the only reason why I want to do that is uh, the only case when we want to handle all of that if it's not uh, null. Right, so we have to do something like this. I think that's a little bit easier. Uh, we got a rate from Provot. Uh, thank you so much, Provot, for the rate. Uh, how was your stream, by the way? Hello, hello. Um, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's go. Ooh. Uh, 
uh, what else do we have in here? Um, so value is not a field. Huh. Hmm. 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 So if I do, do I have to dereference or something? Uh, Zell Swombat, I hope I pronounced your nickname correctly. Thank you so much for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our Epic Rust Club. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so no field value. So I suppose... Ah, this is because we have like a one level of reference in here. So that's kind of the problem, right? We have one level of reference in here. And uh, so option, ah, option, pop itself can actually fail. Oh my God, this is, this is very interesting. So we already checked that the stack is not empty. So at this point, we know for a fact that uh, stack pop will never fail. So this kind of thing is pointless. I think specifically for this kind of situation, like Rust has something like while let, right? Where you can say uh, while let pop uh, some, I think you can do that in Rust. I'm pretty sure. So you're basically uh, fusing these two lines together, right? So you should be able to fuse these two lines together into uh, into a single thing, right? So it's going to be a uh, while let, uh, right? So it's going to be some node stack uh, pop, uh, and there we go. So we're fusing them together, and now it is like working like that, hopefully. So uh, is it going to work now? Mm -mm -mm -mm. But yet, yet again, I, I want to do this kind of thing, of course. Um... Oh, and on top of that, the node itself can be uh, can be empty, of course. So we, we want to have. <laughs> uh, I I, th I think you can actually shadow it like so, right? So yeah. So we, we have two situations when this kind of stuff can happen, uh, right? And okay. So finally, and in here, I want to take the reference of this entire thing. And you know what? Why the fuck did it compile? It com I was expecting a huge pain in the ass because of the borrow checker and me trying to do some weird shit. Why the fuck it is compiled? It, it compiled so fucking easily and I didn't have to use arc or rc. This is sus. This is not rust. I do not recognize rust. It's supposed to be a huge pain in the ass. Anyway, so uh, we don't have any... Uh, any indentation, right? So we don't have any sort of indentation. And as I already said, we can actually derive the indentation from the size of the stack itself. So the deeper we are in the recursion, the more indentation we want to do. So, and the way we can do that is basically uh, something like zero, stack len, right? So we're iterating the uh, length of the stack. Uh, and then we just print uh, like two spaces in here. So uh, it's not gonna produce the same result, but uh, it's gonna produce something. Uh, right. It didn't really work the way I expected it to work though. Mm, so yeah, maybe we have to do this kind of stuff slightly differently. Maybe we have to maintain the level uh, maybe we have to maintain the level uh, within the stack itself. So we are pushing the node reference and also the level. Look at that. Doesn't it look familiar? Doesn't it look familiar? Look at this chat. Don't you notice something interesting about this stack and containing a pair of values? So the recursive version accepts two arguments. It accepts the root and the level. We are literally simulating the call stack of this function. This is actually very interesting. Like, think about it. This is something to think about. Like, at this point, we're kind of simulating the call stack of this thing. So, which further confirms that you don't really need recursion 
right? If you can maintain the stack yourself, you don't really need recursion. You can maybe you can even have like a algorithm making you can convert any recursive algorithm to the non-recursive one automatically. Um, this is actually really interesting. I really like the stuff like that that makes you think about like um, you know the way you program, right? Uh, and alternative ways of, of to program. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do that, and as we push, we wanna push root and the current level. Right, there we go. So we have a level. Uh, so this is a stack, and what we're popping in here, we're actually popping not really a node, but we're popping a frame, or rather arguments. You see? We're popping out the arguments. And maybe we can even, uh, you know, uh, dereference those arguments like this. And that already starts to feel uh, like this thing. Okay. So, and in here, I suppose what we want to do... Um, I suppose what we want to do... I want to refactor this code a little bit, chat. Just a tiny bit. Because you can rewrite this code as if let um, node root, right? You can rewrite it like that, and it's going to be pretty much equivalent code because it doesn't return anything, right? It performs the side effects and stuff like that, uh, right? So it doesn't do anything special. Um, all right, so here I can do something like this. If root... Then I do this thing, I print my stuff, and then when I want to push it, I'm pushing um, mm, 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 level plus one, right? So this is going to be level plus one, uh, and then uh, we're going to have another thing here, level plus one. There we go, and here we are using the actual level in here. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, the reason why I want to do that is because it makes this function look like this one, but this is a non-recursive version. Uh, okay, so let's take a look, and yeah, so it kind of looks like it, but now it is, um, it is rendered like, like a file tree. Right, you see? So the root here, the children of this node are on the next column. Right. So here is one column and here is the second column and the children are uh, two and five. And the children of these things are in here. Right. So uh, this is what we managed to uh, generate in a non-recursive way. Right. So it's a non-recursive algorithm. Right. We're maintaining the stack explicitly. The question is, how can we turn this into this now? Because uh, we cannot just like move uh, this entire thing like this. Uh, hoping that it will automatically work, uh, right, it won't work, so it will look the same. So somehow we need to sort of postpone the printing until it is actually time to print, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so this is very interesting. So how can we do that? Uh, how can we postpone printing? So essentially, uh, when we handle, um, maybe we're going to introduce a new type, right? Maybe we're going to introduce a new type. Uh, so where is that? So first thing we do when we start the algorithm, we push one on the stack, right? We push one on the stack. Then we look at the children, right? We pop one from the stack and we push uh, five and two, right? And we want to print one in the middle of handling two and five, right? We wanna do that in the middle of handling. So what if we introduce two different actions uh, for the call stack? So essentially, um, we're gonna have uh, something like this. Um, enumeration, um, action, right? So, and in here, we're gonna have uh, a call right, which basically stores these arguments, right, so here we have a call action, so this is the call action, and uh, the second action we're going to have is a print action, uh, and the print action, I suppose, prints the T, so here uh, this thing has to be like this, um, so and essentially on the stack we're going to hold this stuff, so this is going to be action T, uh, and then when you push in stuff on the stack, Right. 
here you uh, receive an action, right? So you receive some sort of an action. And depending on an action, you're going to do different things. Um, so we're going to match action. So here you're going to have a call, uh, right? So this one is going to be root and level. And this entire stuff uh, goes there. Uh, right, this entire stuff goes there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, right, right. There we go. Um, and print uh, contains the value and the actual printing in here is going to happen in here right like this uh, so that's a very interesting thing so does that mean that i want to actually store like a reference in here oh man this one is going to be actually tough um this one is going to be tough because um if you start having references in here, if you start having references, um, you have to like work about li uh, like think about lifetime of the action and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, my idea was the following. Uh, so when you want to perform the recursive call, uh, you create the action call uh, thing in here, right? So you create the action call uh, like so. And if you want to print, you push uh, action print and uh, you print the value like so, you see? So essentially this part starts to look like this algorithm, you just postpone the actual printing. You postpone the actual printing and the printing is going to happen when you actually reach that action on the stack. Does that make any sense? Mm, does that make any sense? Right, essentially we, uh, you know, make print as one of the frames, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work properly. Uh, so maybe we can get rid of the references of this thing and put them in here. Right, so we're gonna have call and print and you'll have to customize these things. And then later we can say that um, so this is going to be the action and the types of the action are going to be uh, this thing and this is going to be the reference. And here we're going to have a, uh, a reference to node and use size. So this is what we keep on the stack. And you know what? This looks like something that can be generalized, right? We can essentially generalize that for any recursive algorithm. And maybe because of that, we want to rename this to uh, from print to handle. Right. So, oh my God, this is actually pretty cool. So you have separate calls and you have separate actual handling. So this is kind of like the body of the function. And this is like, this is very interesting. What the fuck? Mm -mm. Hmm. This is very, very cool. Huh. Anyways, so um, let me let me see. So uh, can we even compile this entire shit? Okay, so it's not compilable uh, because this call is this stuff, uh, and in here, uh, right? I can just rename it to like that. Uh, so call, uh, it's actually action. So maybe I can just do something like use um, use action and just like import everything from this thing so I didn't have to do it like that uh, right so it's gonna be like this and uh, okay so it's almost compilable uh, this one is called handle uh, right so and this one aha uh -huh. I see I see I see I see I see This one is very interesting. So we need to have a level. So level also has to be located in here. You know what? I think action has to be like this. So we're basically indicating, uh, we're marking the current frame. Is that frame for calling or is that frame for handling yet? You see what I'm talking about? Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Is that frame for calling or is that frame for handling? And when you are about to handle this thing. Ah, so what if I do something like root level? 
uh, and here here is the call and here is the frame um, so this is the frame this is the frame okay stack pop frame uh, it is you know popable then when you want to call this thing when you want to call this thing you basically repush that thing to the stack stack push uh, handle frame right you basically repush it there and then um, if let some uh, node equal root uh -huh, we're gonna do it like that um oh shit it's it's basically fuck yeah i see uh I, I need to go back i need to go back so it needs to be separate thing it needs to be separate thing uh and it has to be you it just means that i have to store like both things on the stack i have to store both of them on the stack Right, this is going to be u size, and this is the value, and this is the level, and in here I just have to store a uh, level like so, and when I handle this entire thing, I can just use the level. Okay, so that that makes sense. So it has to be t and u. Uh, so you have to explicitly do this kind of stuff. All right, so now uh, this one has to be call, right? So this is the call and this is the handle. Uh, all right, so handle he accepts this thing and we're almost there. So this one accepts more of this stuff. Uh -huh. Who's the god cooler in here? I actually did it. I implemented non-recursive print by introducing two well okay so it's flipped because in the non-recursive version i'm first pushing right and then left so essentially i can fix that by swapping these two things uh right so first oh this one is interesting so it has to be oh that's pretty cool so yeah i see what's going on here yeah it's almost cur that's pretty cool so this is a recursive algorithm and this is a non-recursive one. This is a non-recursive algorithm. Um, so where we maintain the stack explicitly. To maintain the stack explicitly, we actually have to have like two kinds of frame. Uh, so basically postponed one, which is call and the handle one. So, and that allows us to like, you know, uh, have a more uh, refined control over that, but yeah. That's very, very interesting. I really like that. Um, invert while printing. Well, it could be also a solution, right? So you can invert while printing. <laughs> Why not? Uh, sounds good to me. So uh, yeah, I already kind of achieved what I wanted for today, right? I already have a, like, you know, non-recursive version of a recursive algorithm, but I want to implement specifically the in, uh, like invert tree, right? Invert tree, the interesting thing about invert tree is that it creates a completely new tree, right? It creates a completely new tree. So, and because of that, I want to, you know, uh, do that in a non-recursive fashion as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just commit a non-recursive one. Um, and uh, yeah, there we go. Hmm, that's pretty cool. I really like that. Uh, so implement non-recursive version of print tree uh, function, and I'm going to push that right into the repo. You can find the source code uh, of this thing here in the description, and if you're watching live, uh, you can uh, find it in here. Mm -mm. Uh, you can find it in here. People say that I have a typo, and here's an interesting thing. If I had a typo, I'm pretty sure uh, the compiler would tell me. So people saying that I have a typo on line 35, um, which actually makes me question, why the hell the compiler doesn't tell me anything about that, right? So if it is an error, why? Well, there's probably a warning. 
Oh, okay, so it does tell me as a warning. Okay, so maybe, maybe I have to do something like none. But to be fair, uh, we can completely get rid of this entire thing because it's more of a like a if let, uh, you know, root. Uh, let me see. Uh, can we remove this entire thing? Yeah, there we go. Cool, we don't even need that. But what's interesting is that we don't even need this function at all, right? So it's a useless function. <laughs> I only introduced that function as a way to demonstrate like the order in which we are traversing everything. So we can just remove this, this entire stuff. Okay, so we have an invert tree. Uh, maybe I'm gonna actually do something like allow uh, that code, right? Uh, because I wanna, uh, you know, keep this thing. Uh, and there we go, right? So uh, let's do a committee committee, remove that code. Removing that code. Removing that code. Um, okay, so I think implementing invert uh, binary tree in a non recursive way is going to be a little bit easier. Uh, because we already did that once, so we know the gist of converting recursive stuff into a non-recursive one. Uh, before I go ahead and do that, I would like to slightly change this function. I would like to actually uh, accept this thing by maybe a reference, right? Um, because this function does not really um, does not really move the tree into itself. It kind of creates a new one and it indicates that it, it clones it by making t clonable, by requiring t clonable. So uh, let's do the following thing. I'm going to uh, print the tree uh, in a non-recursive way. Uh, right. Uh, but the tree that I want to print is going to be inverted, right? So invert the tree and what we have in here, we are accepting the tree like so. Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, and it does not even compile because this entire thing is like that. Okay, so if I make it uh, like this and it seems to be working. Okay, so did it actually inverted? It in fact inverted it. Okay, that's pretty cool. So in print tree now dead, uh, let's actually allow uh, dead code. Right, so this thing is allowed to be dead. And there we go. Uh, so everything seems to be working. Like, I'm really surprised how Rust improved their uh, lifetime management. I remember I used Rust before 2018. Like, I program in Rust since 2016 for quite some time. And Rust in 2016 was unbearable. It was a huge pain in the ass. And the lifetime management was just like literally unusable. Uh, but the modern Rust has actually fixed a lot of problems that it had, uh, you know, back in the days. So I'm really surprised. Anyways, so let's go ahead and introduce invert tree. Uh, and this one is going to be a non-recursive one, right? So it's a non-recursive version of this thing. I'm going to accept the root, not a reference, and uh, we're going to return a new node reference. Uh, all right. So, and then here we're going to do the similar thing. We're going to introduce the stack, right? So it's going to be a mutable stack, which is uh, a vector, right? So this is the vector new. So, and I think I'm going to use the same sort of like an action thingy, um, right? So, and this is going to be the action. And the call uh, action is going to accept the uh, reference to the node, right? The reference to the node. And do we need the level? I feel like we don't need the level, right? So, yeah, we don't need the level. Cool. And the actual... Um, the actual value that we want to do in here here's the question so what would we want to do with the actual value do we want to even have an actual value mm -mm. i feel like we don't need a handle so to indicate that i think i'm going to actually put a unit in here right because right away as we perform the call we'll be able to uh, actually do something with that. Uh, though... Hmm... Oh, I think I know what's going to be the call. The call is essentially going to be assembling the final node. Right, that's going to be the call. Oh, shit! So here is the... Like, I don't even know how we're going to return the final thing in there. How are we returning the final thing in here? Uh, so what's going to be the return value? 
Hmm. That's something to think about. Huh, I think I need to go back to the drawing board. This one is interesting. Because uh, we only converted the function that doesn't return anything, right? Um, it doesn't return anything, but now we have a function that returns something. Um, which makes me question, what the hell? Mm, what the hell? Okay, so we have something like this, uh, right? We have something like this. So it's going to be one, um, right. So we try to handle one. <sighs> then um, mm, 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 mm. it's going to be five, two. Then we're going to take two and it's going to be four, three. Uh, and essentially, uh, after that, as we encounter three, as we encounter three, we need to sort of mark it as the return value. So this is like the new return. Uh -huh. Through what are we returning everything? It feels like maybe we want to maintain the return function. This one is hard. Holy shit. This one is hard. So maybe I'm going to make a small break because I need to uh, refill my cup of water. I also need to pee and uh, I'll think how we can implement that because this one is really different. I thought um, re-implementing invert tree is going to be the same as implementing like a print tree, but apparently it is not the same. Right. Apparently it is not the same because, yeah, you have to return the value somehow. And maybe because of that, uh, you need some sort of like a different action and whatnot. So, yeah, this one is interesting, actually. Hmm. It's pretty cool. Maybe we can, we need to have two stacks. Oh, shit. That's actually a very interesting idea. So there can be like a handle stack and return stack. Right. So when the things finish uh, handling the stuff in there, they return things via a different stack. And that already starts to feel like uh, having like a virtual machine or something. If you know what I'm talking about. Hmm. Okay. So uh, we have an arc stack. So this is the arc stack where we keep uh, the references to, uh, to the nodes. And here maybe we can have a return stack. Right. And this one is going to be essentially um, this thing. But maybe we're going to actually keep it like that. So we have two stacks. Uh, and what I do, I push the root into the arc stack. And while uh, we still have some stuff in there, like while uh, it's um, root, uh, arg stack uh, pop, right, arg stack pop, uh, we're going to try to work with that. Mm hmm. <laughs> so, um, all right, and the thing itself could be, could be none. Okay, so if, um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, I think I want to make a small break. Okay, let's actually make a small break. Um, right, so uh, let's continue. Um, so how can we do this entire thing? So maybe I need to rethink in which order we perform the calls, right? If you think about it in the original uh, code, we kind of perform the calls like this. So this is going to be the left one, right? So this is the left uh, subtree. Then uh, we're going to have the right one. So the right is going to go like this, right, left. Uh, right, right, right. And there we go. And then we have a value. So that means that first thing we do, we call, um, uh, we perform the call, then another call, and only then the return. And uh, what we do essentially is we take uh, two values from the stack and um, yeah, this one is rather interesting. So maybe 
the return is essentially going to be on a separate stack, right? Every time we're about to return, it's going to be in a separate stack. And as we encounter the handle, right, the handle will pop out the um, the results from the return stack. I think this is how we can organize that. Hopefully, um, we'll see how it goes. So uh, now, um, that means we still need to have an action, right? So the call is going to accept the root and the handle is going to accept the uh, the value itself, right? So because we're going to uh, put the value into the return stack and whatnot. Uh, okay, so here is the arguments and we do all of that until we finished uh, handling all of that. Uh, and uh, so maybe this is overcomplicated, uh, but I kind of also trying to come up with a generalized framework that allows you to convert any recursive function into non-recursive one. So I'm actually planning the action to be uh, like a general thing that you can apply to any recursive function to make it non-recursive. That's what I'm trying to achieve. So, and it feels like the generalized uh, framework is going to contain an action, an argument stack, and a return stack. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting, actually. Um, it's kind of interesting. I really like that. So, and here, uh, yet again, uh, we might as well actually just use if let, right? So, if let, uh, like so, and I'm going to simply return this entire thing. So that simplifies the code a little bit. That simplifies the code. And um, well, of course, this thing has to be equal to root. If uh, let some node um, equal to root. Uh, I think this is more of an action. That's right. So I match the action and I either have a call which contains the root. Um, so this one is also call. Not cell, but call. Uh, right, so this is going to be like this to do. And a handle contains the value. Right. There we go. Handle contains the value. Mm, so then in here, uh, if let some node root, if we have that, first thing I want to do, I want to um, call rever invert, uh, I want to perform the call, so it's going to be arg stack uh, push call um, node left, I think. I think it has to be more of a like a right thing. So then we take a pointer in here. Then I perform the left. And then, as the argument in here, I push handle. And for the handle, uh, I push the value. As we encounter the handle, right, as we encounter the handle, uh, we are about to... Um... Oh, shit, this is actually very interesting. So if we have nothing, if we have none, we must return something on the stack, right? And the thing that we must return on the stack, uh, I think, is um, none, right? Because we're going to assemble uh, the leaf nodes out of that, right? We're going to assemble the leaf nodes out of that. Uh, cool. So after this, um, I go to the return stack and I pop the left value for myself. So if I implemented everything correctly, there should be something on the stack. So I can safely unwrap this entire thing and then I uh, pop the right thing. And uh, value is located in here. So and the only thing I need to do now is basically stack push. Um, Right, I need to create a new one. So this is going to be sum box new uh, node value uh, left to right. There we go. Um, that is actually it, believe it or not. I think th th that is actually it. So after that, uh, I want to do the following thing. Uh, I want to return, uh, return stack uh, pop. So I'm popping the value after the return stack and I know that it contains something if the uh, tree is correct and I just return this entire thing. So this is like a general idea uh, of this entire stuff. Will it work? I have no idea actually. <laughs> Maybe it will. 
<laughs> Maybe it will not. Uh, so the value, I think value has to be cloned. So I have to explicitly do something like value clone. Uh, and let's go to the compilation errors. Uh, how many of them we're going to have. So uh, this one needs use action. Uh, so we don't prefix it all the time. Uh, okay, invert tree expected, but it already fails in a different one. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So that means here else has to be just none. Uh, right. Why the fuck did it compile? Okay, so <laughs> uh, let's try to use a non recursive one. Uh, non rec. Uh, okay. Okay, so it panicked. Nice. I really like that. Uh, so it panicked. Uh, 82. Uh, and it panicked literally here. Would you look at that? Would you freaking look at that? That's very interesting. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. But at some point we're gonna encounter none, right? And then we'll push none. And then we're gonna just like use left and right. So why this wouldn't work? That's a good question. Why this wouldn't work? I don't quite understand. Mm. So at some point, uh, right is going to be none. Right, right is going to be none. Um, so we're going to have the none in here, and then we're going to push none. So for each of these things, we're going to create uh, uh, this stuff. <laughs> I want to trace maybe the the stack. I want to kind of trace the stack. But do I want to trace the the return stack or not? Um, so it fails. Mm -hmm. So we got five gifted subs from 4M Cell 4. Thank you so much for um, for five gifted subs and everyone who got the sub. Uh, welcome to our Epic Zodian community. How about that? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate the money. Um, I really need them after the hackers will steal all of my revenue because all of the data is leaked. So, yeah, thank you so much. Mm, so, do, 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 Oh my god, we have got even more subs. Uh, so, um, thank you, thank you so much for uh, for another 10 tier 1 subs. So, yeah, it will go for a while now, so it's gonna be... What's quite some time? Uh, so... Um, mm, 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 mm. That one is very, very interesting. That one is very, very interesting. <sighs> so, uh, let me see. So maybe on each iteration we can uh, print this kind of thing. Um, so it's going to print ln uh, and we're going to have an action. Uh -huh. And uh, we just print the action. And then uh, I also want to maybe print the uh, return stack, right? So here is the action, we perform the action and we print the return stack after that, uh, like so, uh, red stack. And uh, on each of the iteration, also we're gonna do something like this. So we're gonna basically trace uh, and see how it goes. So it doesn't even compile properly. This is because action is not debuggable. Uh, let's actually quickly make it debuggable. Uh, derive, uh, debug, okay. So what else do we have? Um, mm, 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 mm. 
cannot be formatted, so uh, that means we also have to say that this thing has to be also debuggable, right? We want to be able to debug that. Uh, debug is not a trait. Uh, this is because we also need to import it from here. Uh, cool. So we performed the call, right? So here is the call. Um, right, and then we've got right away action handle one. I see. I'm an idiot. Oh, and that explains... Well, that doesn't explain anything, actually. Yeah, that explains. So we have to push them in a different order, because we push the calls, so handle is going to be at the top. That explains it. Okay. Uh, oh my god, my brain thought that at the top you're going to have this call, then this call, and then handle is going to be below both of them. B because I read them from top to bottom, and my tired brain uh, thought, yeah, okay, so that explains it. So I'm really glad that I decided to trace this thing, and it actually revealed that it has to be in a different order. So first we have to push uh, the handle, and then we have to push the left. And that explains why... Uh, in the uh, in a non-recursive print, it printed them in reverse order because my my brain also thought in in that oh my god, I see, that explains everything. That explains everything. So this is the top, right? And we pop pop the top for the left, and then okay, so that explains absolutely everything. So that should work now. Um, all right, I'm really glad. And uh, it didn't actually flip anything, by the way. <laughs> didn't actually flip. And the question is why? Um, so here's the left. Uh, maybe I have to just do it like that. Uh, and let me see. And now it flipped it. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So I can remove this entire thing. Uh, and we have a non-recursive version of invert tree. Seriously, no joke. So it's a non-recursive one. Um, and maybe we can now uh, remove the recursive one. So we can compare them. Like This one is a little bit beefier. But what's interesting is that this is not limited by the size of the call stack. So you may say that this is kind of like a stupid exercise. But it's actually not. Uh, I think knowing how to do this kind of stuff is important when you're dealing with uh, very nested data. Your data is so nested that it is like you, you the call stack is not enough. You either have to increase your call stack, uh, right, or you have to implement your algorithm like that. Right. This thing is not limited by the call stack. This thing is limited by uh, the amount of, of your memory. Right. So that's essentially what you can do. So we have a full control of the of this entire stuff. Hey, what color scheme are you using? I'm using a color scheme called Gruber Darker. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you the link, uh, Gruber Darker. Hey, hey, Vadim, who are you dying? Alpha Dessert or Chance, your Twitch passport, or turn on two factor authentication in a Twitch judge, what I see is the trick. Thank you, Aaron Kronos, for a nine month of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, I know about the data breach. Uh, I'm gonna uh, switch my password, and uh, two factor authentication is already enabled for me. Uh, as far as I know, it is enabled for every partner and um, affiliate because Twitch refuses to uh, sign up a contract for you uh, unless you have two-factor authentication turned on. I think if I remember correctly, do we have any affiliates or partners? Because I actually signed up the contract a long time ago, but I vaguely remember that it forces you to enable to, to FA if you're signing up the contract with them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so every partner and affiliate, they have enabled two-factor, otherwise they just don't refuse to sign up. Um, mm, well, now we know why <laughs> they knew that their security is shit. <laughs> well, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, darker theme. Uh, so this is my theme for Emacs that I use, and I'm going to also put it into the into the description for people who uh, watch me on YouTube. And by the way, if you watch on Twitch uh, and you uh, want to know where I upload my VODs, I upload them here. You can find the link in the chat. 
Um, all right, so um, my color, my current uh, color is in, because I change them once in a while because I get tired of them. So yeah, so it's it's the current one. Um, all right. Uh, okay, let's actually rem remove completely non-recursive ones. Uh, and uh, so this is going to be print. This is going to be that. And uh, yeah, generate three. Uh, three replace non-rec. It would be also really interesting to implement generate tree in a non-recursive manner. Do you know what I'm talking about? What do you guys think? Huh. That's a very cool idea. What in, what's interesting is that uh, it will allow us to get rid of the counter because we'll be able to allocate the counter on the data stack. Right. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Huh. Okay. Mm, so, let me let me see. Okay. So, uh, let me do a committee committee. Remove non-recursive... Um, Remove recursive versions of print tree and invert tree. Uh, right, and we're going to push that right into the repo. You can find the source code of this thing here in the chat or in the description if you watch on uh, YouTube. Uh, so, and I guess the last challenge that, sh that I want to take is re-implementing generate tree. Uh, in a non-recursive manner, right? And I think since we know how to handle return values, it should be relatively simple to do, uh, right? So we're gonna have something like a fan, um, allow uh, dead code, uh, generate, generating get seat, throw another run, never ending cycle, set, resetting again. Okay, so what we're gonna have? Uh, so we're gonna have argument stack and the uh, return stack. Uh, arg stack. Um, mm, 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 mm. So it's definitely going to be an action. So the call action is going to contain what? Mm, what is it going to contain? Mm, 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 mm. To, 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 to. I'm thinking it's going to contain the level. That's the only thing it should contain. Uh, so it's going to be U size. So this is a U size. And the handle is going to contain. I don't really know what it's going to contain. So, yeah. Uh, I think that's, that's it. So I'm going to actually keep this as, as none. Uh, right, and then mute uh, return stack. We can keep track of some sort of a counter. So if we put counter in here, right, so this is going to be counter, but we can just keep it global to the entire thing. So I don't think it's that big of a problem. Uh, and in here, a return stack just contains like this thing. Um, yeah. So it feels like I'm simulating a virtual machine, right? I have an argument stack, I have return stack, and I have like operations and whatnot. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually kind of cool. I really like that. Um, anyway, so uh, arg stack. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I'm pushing call and I'm starting at level. Uh, while let uh, some action uh, arg stack pop, right, arg stack pop, and what's the action, right, is that a call action, uh, which contains only a level as far as I know, right, so it's a call, uh, or is that a handle, and handle as far as I know, right, we put a unit in here so it shouldn't contain anything, mm, right. And if you want to handle, um, if you want to handle, we need to, um, we need to pop left and right. So this is going to be left, uh, return stack, uh, pop, unwrap, and then uh, right, there we go. And uh, then we push back the uh, node. So this is going to be more of a sum um, box new node 
the value is going to be the counter, right? So this is the counter uh, value and then left and right. So after that, we have to increment the counter, right? So it's going to be plus one. There we go. So when we generate in the tree, this one kind of starts at Oof. Well, it actually depends on how exactly we're going to handle all that. So probably that there. Okay. All right. So call, mm, call, call, call. Uh, first thing we want to do. First thing we want to do. We want to do arg stack push. Right. Arg stack push, and we do call uh, level minus one. And then, so this is for the for the right one. This is for the left one. And then here we're going to just do push. Uh, handle. So this time, by the way, I mean to have handle at the bottom. I mean it to be at the bottom because I want it to be uh, handled at the top. So uh, here I'm doing everything correctly. Um, to be fair, we have to have some sort of condition here. If uh, level equals um, greater than zero, we do that. Otherwise, we need to push. Uh, Otherwise, we need to push none into the return stack. Return stack push none. So you see, we have a generalized framework for uh, implementing uh, non-recursive algorithms now. And it's based on two stacks, argument stack and return stack, and action and two actions on the argument stack. It's actually call and handle. Handle basically postpones some action uh, that you want to perform, right? So this is actual, uh, actual um, you know, calls. And basically you can imagine that you perform the action that you want to do in a recursive function in a handle, but it's postponed, so it's going to be put in here. So we can sort of visually um, visualize that this thing is going to be uh, executed in here, roughly. Uh, right. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. So uh, let me see if it's going to work. Okay, so it does not uh, compile previous definition. So we redefined this entire thing. So we should call it non rec. Right. So let's actually also say non rec. And uh, now we can get rid of the, uh, of the counter in here. Uh, all right, so here we have call. Let's do use action uh, star. And uh, what else do we have in here? Um, expected because of the return type. So I suppose I forgot to do this thing. Return stack pop unwrap. There we go. Uh, what do we have in here? And uh, we failed yet again. So we unwrapped a none. Uh, which is rather interesting. So at which point we unwrapped and on? Did it fuck up the order of these things yet again? Did I? I feel like I did. I feel like I did. Okay, so uh, let's do the following stuff. Uh, print a len, uh, action, uh, this thing, right? So here is the action. Mm, what else? And then uh, we're going to have print uh, a len uh, a return stack, right? So here is the return stack, a red stack. Uh, and let's see what's going to happen. So at which point it fails. Cool. So here's the action. And uh, after performing this action, return stack does not contain anything, right? It does not contain anything. Uh, and I'm an idiot, I think. Uh, so when I'm generating the tree, when I'm generating the tree, oh yeah, I see. Mm. I'm actually returning the, yeah, handle has to happen here. Yeah, handle has to happen here. But counter is incremented up front, which means that the handle action has to be the value of the counter that you want to put in here. Uh, all right, so that means I need to increment the counter uh, in here. I'm incrementing the counter in here. Uh, then I'm using the value of the counter in here, and then I postpone in left and right. So then uh, the actual value that, that I want to use is going to be used in here. Uh, and uh, there we go. So tracing action and return stack is actually very useful. I really like that. I really like the technique of just like tracing them. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so we have that. At some point it will turn none, and then it will actually produce the expected result. There we go.
So we actually starting at two for some reason, and this is because we increment the counter in here. So I think I'm gonna actually increment the counter in here. Uh, right, there we go. So here we have one, two, five, and this entire thing is flipped. There we go. Uh, this entire thing is flipped. So we have a non-recursive version of generate tree. So that means I can remove that one. And now we have only non-recursive versions. Right, so we're generating tree, binary tree, non-recursively. We print binary tree non-recursively and we invert it also non-recursively using the same framework for all of, all of the three functions. Two stacks and uh, one single action. Um, I wonder if you can actually simplify this sort of framework for turning any recursive function into a non-recursive one. So I, I think this is like a minimum that you need to have. Right, so the argument stack with the action, call and handle. Handle postpones the some particular thing that you want to do. And the return just contains the return values that you gather in the handle usually. Um, so that's actually pretty cool. Um, all right, so I think, um, I think I fulfilled the challenge, right? The challenge was to, um, you know, invert a binary tree using non-recursive uh, algorithm. And I think I did. What do you guys think? Mm -mm -mm. What do you guys think? Uh, all right. So, okay. Um, implement uh, non recursive uh, recursive version of generate. Uh, tree and I'm going to push that right into the re repo. Uh, so you can find the source code uh, here in the chat if you're watching live or you can find it in the description. Uh, two, two, two. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So and since I now I know how to, uh, you know, implement recursive stuff without using any recursion, I could probably implement some sort of a recursive algorithm in Porth, right? So for those who doesn't know, Porth is a programming language that we are developing usually on the streams, but I took a break from developing that uh, language. And one of the things about this, um, you know, about this language is that it's really early at its stage of the development, right? So it doesn't have much things. And one thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have a recursion. But that doesn't mean that we cannot implement recursive algorithms in it, right? So you can already manage memory uh, in this uh, language. So that means you can have several stacks in this language. So that means you can already implement something recursive uh, without actually having a recursion. Uh, but I would like to do that, uh, but I think I'm going to do that next time because I'm already streaming for two hours and I usually try to not to stream longer than two hours because it's kind of difficult for me. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to put the link to uh, Porth in the description. Uh, so Porth source code, uh, source code, I'm going to put it in here. And um, so I also want to put a playlist uh, of the Porth development. Right, because I think we already have like around 16, 17 episodes of Porth development. If you want to know how exactly we develop this language, uh, I'm going to put uh, the link to that language here in the description as well. So here is the playlist of the Porth development. Uh, so Porth development playlist. So and for those who's watching on Twitch, you can find this playlist in here if you're interested. OK, does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any question? Uh, so two, two, two. Inverting binary tree in Porth. Yeah, this is one of the things I wanted to do today, but unfortunately I already ran out of time. So maybe we're going to do that next time. We're going to have like a, a separate stream dedicated to implementing inverting binary tree in Porth without using recursion. But maybe we can wait until we have a recursion in Porth because eventually we're going to have procedures. And once we have procedures, we're definitely going to have recursion. We'll see. Is there a performance difference between recursive and non-recursive algorithm? Probably. Um, I have no idea. I already removed a recursive algorithm, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably there is a performance difference, but I don't think it's that much. So, uh, Do you go over uh, how Porth is parsing the source code? Well, it's actually not doing anything special. So the way Porth parsing source code, I'm going to show you. 
Right, imagine that you have uh, some sort of a source code. So let's uh, wait until I, uh, IPython actually finishes the stuff. So uh, here is uh, a very simple uh, port code. Uh, so plus print. So this entire thing basically sums up two numbers, 34 and 35, 35 and prints it on, uh, on the screen. So the way I parse this kind of source code is like this. That's it. So that's the only thing uh, port does. No joke. Uh, so it does a slightly different thing for string literals. For string literals, we have to do a little bit of a complication, but the generally, in a nutshell, if you get rid of the string literals, it is like that. Right. So majority of the complication that you will see in parsing is because of the string literals, right? Because uh, if you had a string literal like uh, hello world, uh, it would be parsed incorrectly if you just split it, right? So you see these two things uh, were recognized as two separate uh, tokens, which is not correct. So just to fix that, we have a little bit of a complication. But apart from that, it's just like splitting by spaces, nothing special. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions? Um, any questions? Um, I'm just looking into the chat and just like to, trying to find any questions. Do, 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 do. What about its assembly generation? Well, to generate assembly, it uses a single function called print, right? And the way it generates assembly is just uh, does it like this, uh, rex 69, right? And uh, as you can see, it uh, generated one single line of assembly, right? So, and basically we uh, generate multiple lines of assembly and then we assemble it with the, with the final assembly. If you take a look at the source code of course itself, uh, right, so porth.py uh, generate, yeah, there we go, as you can see. Well, we're not using print, but uh, dot write is basically the same. It's just like prints it to, uh, to a file, right? So as you can see, we just generate an assembly, like, yeah, just with the print function. Everything is super simple. That's the beauty of this language. Uh, you, you don't need complicated frameworks or like, you know, sophisticated CS knowledge. You just print things. You just split things by spaces and works mm. will you add second stack for example data imports i'm not sure about that yet we'll see mm. what do i want to do next for the ports i want to start self-hosting it mm. i want to start self-hosting mm. mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, so maybe we should raid somebody. So because we got ready today, let's see if anyone is streaming anything on the software development section, software game development. Let's take a look. Uh, I wish the website. Uh, hackers who will get uh, and explore the source code of Twitch, please uh, make the Twitch faster and submit the patch to, uh, to the Twitch developers, please. Or maybe I can do that myself. Right. So <laughs> imagine taking the source code of Twitch on the stream and stream on Twitch how you make it faster. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, by the way. It's a joke, but that would be nice. Um, okay, so uh, one life's um, left is streaming, so maybe we should raid him, uh, but maybe not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who I want to raid. Let me see. Oh, my God. Uh, it's really, really painful. Uh, so what do we have? Uh, pixel art. So a camel. There's a Jai, but one life's left. We already raided them. We already raided them. Chill and code type script. Is anyone doing anything interesting? So multiplayer C++. Uh, I'm sure. Is anyone streaming Rust? Do we have any Rust developers in here? Uh, any Rust developers? JavaScript. I don't know, man. I don't know. All right. As usual. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'm going to go. Love you. Mm -hmm.